what do we leave on earth? What do we leave on earth? Now, I'm closing in on it, okay, because you guys are all a lot younger than I am. But uh, as Norm Miller tells me at Interstate Batteries, he and I, Norm's 76, I'm 73. Norm always tells me, Joe, we're playing in the fourth quarter on house money. So I, I told him, I said, Norm, I'm in the two-minute offense. I'm not even going back in the huddle. I'm trying to get in everything I can get in. But the point is, what do we leave on this earth? I think that's a little bit of a context here. So if we think about that, let me tell you about a little uh, a meeting I had here uh, a few years back. And uh, Bradley Thompson was here. He's a banker. And we're in a meeting. And so halfway through the meeting, all of a sudden, Bradley, we took a little bit of a break. He goes, hey, Joe. He said, was George Therrell your spiritual father? And I went, yes, yes, he was. If you've read my book or anything, George Thurl was a little Sunday school teacher in Fayetteville, Arkansas. When I was coaching, moving through the college ranks, he kind of took me under his wing. He would write me notes each week. He would call me on the phone. He became my spiritual father. And I said, yes, yes, he was. He said, well, you know what's, what's interesting? He said, Coach Moore at Appalachian State, who was coaching at Appalachian State then, he said George was his spiritual father. So if we stop and think about that for a minute, George had been gone 20 years. Okay, what was left? What did George leave on this earth? Okay, it wasn't his money. I don't think anybody knows where it was or anything. Maybe the kids have some. It wasn't his house. They had sold his house. I went over to visit his wife. She was at, the, at that point, she since passed away, but she was in an old age home. Basically what had happened is what? The one thing that George left on this earth, what did he leave? He left his influence he had on me and the influence he left on Coach Moore and the other people that he had touched on this earth. That's what's left. So if we think about that for you and I, most of you are so young, you say, hey, you know, I don't give a lot of thought to that, but I think what? That, that really, really is important. If that's the game plan, what we leave on this earth, then we need to have a strategy for that, okay? So that's first, I want you to think about that. Secondly, who do we have the most impact on, okay? If we're gonna, if we're gonna have Im be impacting people, okay, who do we have the most impact on? Our kids, all of you. If you don't have kids, you're gonna have, odds are. Okay, so our kids are very, very important to us. Most of you have children. And then eventually, when you get as old as I am, you're going to have grandkids, right? So if you think about that, probably one of the most important things we're going to do, you and I, is impact what? Our kids. Uh, I go back to, I was coaching in Washington, and I um, had a guy there that was working inner city with a bunch of kids, and he had brought them out to the complex there, and he uh, asked me if I would take him through the complex and give him a little tour. And so I said, yeah, sure. I'll, I, this thing sticks in my mind, and I think I'll carry it with me forever. I went over there, and I talked to him for a minute or two, and I said, hey, come on, we're going to take a tour. I'm going to show you the weight room. And this little guy was probably about five years old, and I mean, he reached up, and he grabbed my hand, and he had that thing in a death grip. And he was looking up at me, and I took him on a tour of the weight room. And you know what I thought? You know what I thought on that? That little guy, at that point, I, I probably could have had a huge impact on him, whatever I chose to do with him. And w w for all of you, when we have kids, we have what? A huge impact on our kids. And so I think the challenge for you and I today, what I want to talk about a little bit is that impact. Okay, and uh, as a part of that, let me say this. I got grandkids. The other day I was in, at the beach, and all the grandkids were down there, all, all eight of them. This is last summer. And so I asked, would any of them go to Starbucks with me? And one, Jet, the littlest one, said, I'll go, coach. So we get, we get in the car. We go to Starbucks because he knows I'm buying him a donut and stuff. I buy him whatever he wants. I don't care. 
And so, uh, so on the way back in the car, honestly, the little guy was sitting in the back seat because he had to be back there. And I'm driving the car, and halfway back, <laughs> all of a sudden, he quit talking. He stopped for a second. And he goes, Coach. I went, what, Jet? And he goes, how come you didn't have any kids? <laughs> he always saw me around the grandkids. And so I said, Jet, I had to explain to him, I said, hey, I did have, I had Uncle Coy, my, I mean, Uncle JD, and I had your dad, Coy. And he sits there and he goes, oh. He kind of goes, <laughs> now, my other story on the grandkids, I bring them to work every now and then. If you go over there, you see the cars and all the stuff they play with in my office. Okay, and so I, I come walking in my office one day in case my, my grandson on the floor and he got down one of our drag racing cars. And it's the only one we got from the years we were in drag racing. I went, Case, you can't play with that. That's not a play pretty. You're going to tear that thing up. That's the only thing we got left from our drag racing years. That's really important to me. So I took it away from him. He's looking at me, and I went over, and I went to set it down on my shelf in back of my, my seat. And he looks at me, and he goes, Coach. I went, what, Case? And he says, you better put it on the next shelf. I can reach that one. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, man, I got eight grandkids that run all over the place. But the point is this, and you guys at some point are going to what? You're going to have grandkids. And I think the point is, we know what? We know what? Those little guys, when they're that age, we can have a huge impact on their lives. Okay? When they get to be 45 and like JD and Coy, they don't pay any attention to anything I say. But when they're that young, we can have a huge impact. So what I want to talk about today is in that context for you and I. What are we going to leave on this earth? And how are we going to impact our kids, our grandkids, and those others around us? Okay, so let's think about that for a minute. So my point here is this, okay? The most important thing that was ever shared with me in life, I'm going to share with you today. Okay, and it goes back to this. I want to take a few minutes here this morning, and I want to try and give you my thought process. Okay, now remember, that's the PE major. That's ballroom dancing and handball, so it's not real complicated here. We're not going to split the atom or anything. I'm going to share with you the most important thing that's ever shared with me, and it's going to be why... Why do I believe that there's a God? Okay? Now, I, I know a lot of people would probably say, hey, you proved, proved that to me, Joe. I'll believe. And I actually think we can do that. So it's a little, little bit of a process here. So think with me on this and see if this makes sense. Why do I believe that there's a God? Okay, now the reason why that's real important is what? If I believe in God and I belong to him, and I have a personal relationship with him, and I believe he made me and put me here, okay, that means I've got an all-powerful God there that's helping do what? Guide every decision I make in life. Okay, so let's think about it for a minute. I remember the very first time, the first thing I start off with here on proving that there's there, there, why I believe in God. I remember the very first time I had to make a big decision in my life. I was in the third grade, Sand Hill Elementary School, okay? And in school, the teacher was telling me this, that two billion years ago, okay, <laughs> there was a puddle of water and two amoeba happened to hit in a muddy puddle of water and I was the result. I don't know, not real smart. That didn't sound good to me. <laughs> what she was really saying is what? I was an accident. I got here because two weird things happened to hit in a muddy puddle of water, and it wound up making a human being. That's what she was saying. Now, thank goodness my mother and grandmother had me in church, and in church, I was being told something totally different. I, in church, I was being told that there was an all-powerful, all-knowing, all-loving God who looked down 
knit me together in my mother's womb, made me special and different, and wanted to have a personal relationship with me. So here I am, nine years old. Am I an accident? Or does somebody love me and make me? And that's really where we are, isn't it? Because no matter what, that, that's the decision process we've got to make. Okay, something blew up, <laughs> and we all wound up here. Okay, <laughs> or <laughs> somebody made me and loved me and put me here. Now, I say this to you, the first part of that proof and everything is I kind of look around at this world here. Let's look at the world for a second, this earth that we live on. Okay, what a miracle this thing is. We have the plants outside that put off the oxygen you and I breathe. We have men and women, the ability to love each other. I remember standing outside waiting for my first grandson, and I heard Jackson in there crying, and 15 minutes later they brought out and put him in my arms. And I'll remember this forever. As soon as they put him in my arms, I swear to you, he went just like this. And it was almost like he was saying, Coach, let's get it on. <laughs> I'll remember, now, the feelings I have for him that we have for each other, the feelings we have for our kids, okay, that's an accident. Is that an accident? That we have that ability to love each other and love them? Okay, is it an accident? Or did somebody create us in order to be able to have those feelings? Now, I, I, I said I think I can prove to you that God exists. If I said to each one of you guys, okay, what do you think about this watch? Every single person here would look at this watch and go, hey, pretty complicated piece of machinery. It's got a minute hand, a second hand, okay? If I said to you, do you believe there's a watchmaker? Every single person sitting here through common sense would say what? That thing couldn't have fallen together. Somebody had to do what? Make it. So you would probably answer to me, yeah, I believe there's a watchmaker. So if you think about that, you've never met him. You've never talked to him. But through what? Common sense, you say, yeah. Common sense says there's, where there's a watch, there's a watchmaker. Think about this world then. We can't find another earth like this anywhere. They're spending a billion dollars going to Mars. They aren't looking for people. <laughs> They're looking to see if we have moisture on Mars. Now, between me and you, I don't give a flip if there's moisture on Mars, okay? <laughs> but if they want to spend a billion dollars, go get it. Knock yourself out. But my point is this. We can't find another Earth like this anywhere, okay? Crafted the way it is, put together the way it is, okay, this thing is... You know, and so I would say to you, do you believe there's a world maker? You got earth? Okay. Do you believe somebody made it? And I think the common deduction for most of us is what? Just like we believe there's a watch, there's a watchmaker, certainly, okay, where there's a world like this, there has to be a world maker. So that's the first thing I would say to you and proven to you, I think, or the reason why I think there's a God. All of this, you got two choices. What an awful thought that would be. You're an accident. Is that awful or what? Or somebody loved you and made you, okay, and cares for you and wants to have a personal relationship. So that's the first thing I would just share with you. To me, this earth is proof that God exists.